Welcome back to the Underground Sound. I told you that would be completely seamless. I am DJ Exec with me, Carlos Fandango. Underground Sound, putting the us back into music. Please like, subscribe, and share, and let's get your music out there. Absolutely. Um, so, obviously, the, the first half of the show, before the break, we hear some great music. Uh, hopefully, this will continue uh, going. I'm kind of I'm very intrigued by, uh, by track nine that we're going to get to. Um, just because of the name of it is the people need pickles. But before we get to that, before we get to that, uh, this one that we have coming up right now is called a family reunion. It's from a man named Johns. Uh, what can you, uh, what kind of background do you have uh, about this song so far, Carl? Um, well, this one's a bit of a quirky one. I think it'd be, it's a good one to kickstart second half of the show because it's quite upbeat and it's um, a sort of like a bit of those sort of retro 90s songs that they did sort of like harking back to the 70s and 60s um but i thought the artwork's really cool as well so a man named john's profile is quite cool like a melty face type thing and i don't know every every one of the singles has got some really interesting artwork and cute so very quirky sort of artist by the sound of it and this one i just looked at the artwork and thought oh this looks cool and then the song was pretty cool too Short song, short and sweet, but upbeat. And it says Herbie Mann influenced and stolen. So Herbie Mann being the sort of uh, 60s um, sort of jazz jazz related artist and uh, I say some, some more jazz than anything else. But um, yeah, and I thought, oh, I'm intrigued. Well, let's check it out. Labeled as alternative music. Here is mm. a man named John's Family Reunion. Right, well, yeah, I thought it was really cool. So you got this very late 80s samples sound when samples properly started coming in and the early 90s sort of funky side of things where they sort of it was harking back to the early 70s, late 60s and all that, like the Herbie Mann sort of music. And um, this, not that I'm a massive fan of rap, but it's kind of calling out for a rap artist to be able to sort of utilise that. And, and rap in certain segments and it's, it's kind of you know could could be longer could be used as a cool rap sort of number as well but yeah really funky cool production upbeat short and sweet definitely listen to that a few times and it's got a nice little um nice vibe to it i like that fun it's fun music 
There we go. Man named John's 56 followers, 1,320 plays, 34 tracks. Um, that one with family reunion doesn't look we like did. it's doesn't look like he's releasing it anywhere else uh, huh. aside from aside from slaps because I don't see um I don't see any of the Spotify logos or anything. Yeah, not uh, everyone does that though. I mean, it's, it's that's something you have to do as part of the upload, and it's a bit laborious and painful to do. I wish there was an easier way of doing it. So some people don't even know about it. Maybe probably. Uh, I do like I do like the artwork. Um, you know, just like w- what we were talking about with Tom McDonald, um, Beastie Boys. 100 percent. i you know i'm feeling it and um you know if you're a fan of of guy Ritchie movies sherlock holmes mm-hmm. snatch uh lock stock two smoking barrels 100 percent um kind of like feel that in the uh in the soundtrack to those movies uh very funky i didn't expect it to be an instrumental really with um with labeled as alternative music uh but i mean it works it still works so um good great great quality um radio friendly um movie friendly uh video game friendly i mean it's pretty much uh it's pretty much like hey um sky's the limit with this song i do like it i'm gonna have to check out more from um uh from man named john's there but uh but from my initial impression here um definitely uh has it going on as the uh, as the kids say these days or do they or do the kids not say that anymore (laughs) I don't know what they say. It changes know. week to week. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, great job, man. Uh, man groovy. Jones, really, really groovy. Great job right there. Um, hey, but we're having a really good show here. Mm. Hmm. Oh, there's some good tracks out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so remember, folks, video description is below. Find these. If you if you found any of these songs interesting, they hit your eardrum the correct way. But just uh, head down to the video description below. Find the link to these artists. If they have other venues that you prefer to listen to them on, such as Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, whatever the case may be, look them up. But of course, give them a like, give them a share, give them a follow if you find their social accounts and everything like that. And, um, and you know, let's support these uh, brilliant um, underground musicians and independent artists. Um Everything always helps, right? So uh, a lot of people are doing this, obviously, just for the passion, because w- we talked about it before. There's not much money to be to be made in uh, in streaming royalties these days. Mm. Um, so what can you do here? So we're going now to um, what is it, Dov Dovner. Well, it says here on the um, profile, it's pronounced Downer. Downer. Okay, it looks like Dovner, but it's Downer. Yeah, is the solo project of Ian Wasdin an Austin, Texas-based songwriter and producer. Um, One track uploaded so far, only joined in July uh, this year. Uh, 99 plays and 20 followers from one track is a really good strike record. Four saves, 134 fires, and 99 plays for the track is is very good going. That is 100%. 20 followers, 99 plays off of the one track is absolutely uh, fantastic. Looks like uh like carlos mentioned uh, 134 fires four saves um 99 plays it is available as you see with the icon there on spotify as well uh listed as alternative rock uh saying first single all written performed recorded and mixed by yours truly uh so let's uh let's check this out this is a uh, downer with back then i 
downer right there from austin texas uh once again 20 followers 99 plays one track so far um you can see the social media link right there instagram so please follow them on instagram if you're so inclined um i gotta say myself personally i think a tad long 436 and uh and you know i think um from my end here the vocals were a little overpowering um could use a bit of production as far as that's concerned but otherwise i feel like uh you know as mentioned here obviously as the first single all written performed recorded and mixed by yours truly as it says there uh so if this is indeed like a like a first track then obviously you know things are like that things like that are to be expected um once again just having another kind of like a helping ear rather than a helping hand uh, would kind of would work because this song is 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 groovy it's um has that nice really kind of like relaxed kind of um vibe to it you know what i mean going into the breaks especially so um not that it was bad it was it was it was good overall i think it, it's just i would have definitely tuned down the vocals because it does seem like maybe the automation was off or the um or the overall mixing maybe the um um, maybe the the finalization of the uh, of, of the master was kind of uh, just a bit too loud would be my only criticism otherwise uh great job there uh ian wasden of austin texas um singer songwriter and producer so um good on you like that mm. yeah i mean I, I liked the um straight away with anything with slide to guitars particularly when they're there's multiple layers mm -hmm. and they're harmonizing uh and it gives a dreamy melancholic sort of 
uh, reflective. This is a song when if you're in a reflective mood, it's the perfect song really for you. Um, you know, you have one of those days or something coming home from a difficult day at work. This would be a good song for that, really, just unwinding. Um, but uh, yeah, tight and unusual harmonies I've written down and really unusual harmonies as well. Just, just, uh, but also using that sort of high, low octave in certain parts. But then these really sort of very tight unusual harmonies in fact quite an unusual voice because it's got very female um higher vocal you know higher register quality to it and it's yes um you you, you think oh is that a, is that a featured artist or is no that is actually um you know in in uh Wasden's, um vocals and and i thought really good but i know what you mean yes yeah, it's, it's possibly sort of uh, times overpowering so it just needs to be blended into the mix slightly more but solid production otherwise um, fade outs. Now I've I've got a big thing about fade outs. I love fade out songs like they used to do. They don't do me enough these days. This was the perfect song to do it. I actually thought it was good length. Um, although you could probably cut out a chunk of it and and make it a shorter radio friendly version. I think for an album version this would be perfect, fine, and with a lovely long fade out that gives it that dreamy sort of drifting away quality that that you get. Um, but otherwise, oh, and just before those, I mean, because it wasn't really a chorus as such, but you could say it was a it was a, one of those instrumental chorus songs so the slide guitar part for that motif was the chorus so you, but there was a nice bass movement in one of the chords just before the slide chorus kicks in and there's a really nice sort of movement on the bass and i i, I um uh had really spotted that first time around when i first heard it so uh and i thought that was really good so nice little touches in there and lots of promise considering that's their first song released i think that's um I've, I've followed them because i thought that could be down it could be really interesting i agree i agree a hundred percent uh once again once again uh criticism here is made to be constructive not mm. not uh, detrimental um this thing is I, i'm looking at the fade out like what you're talking about kind of like seems like the fade out is nearly about 25 seconds which kind of like seems a little bit long um so it that's could good. be it could be shortened down a little bit um, and you know, and that could have definitely taken away from those 25 seconds, uh, just to make it just about a, uh, a four minute song, which would definitely make it, uh, I think, um, you know, for today's day and age, a little bit more, um, a little bit more listenable, right? Because, you know, the, I, I do think that the days of six to seven, eight, nine, ten 10 minute songs are pretty much gone. Um, you know, when we're, talking about, when we're talking about Led Zeppelin, Guns N' Roses, you know, Metallica, where they had these, you know, ballads and everything, right? Um, I don't think that those are super, uh, super popular anymore. But uh, once again, agreed, production quality is good. The only thing that I would say is just kind of like tune down the vocals a little bit and um, mix them in the song a little, a little more properly, uh, you know, and overall, uh, just... I mean, good song. Just once again, just yeah. those, those are the only two criticisms I, I have here. Is it's a bit long at four, at four minutes and thirty six, and um, vocals are just a tad overpowering. See, but, the thing is, uh, about five minutes forty five, Mister Blue Sky is too long. Uh, six, five minutes fifty nine, Bohemian Rhapsody is too long, and uh, and uh, six minutes or so, um, uh, yeah, Bob Dylan. Uh, uh, what's his face is. Um, Oh dear, forgotten the name. How can I forget that song? But anyway, basically, there's there's so many classic songs. Yes. Stairway to Heaven, you know, and th th you could l list a whole <laughs> raft of songs that develop and are great and classics and still are heard nowadays. So I think that it depends what you want. If you wanted to be played on the radio, yes, you've got to do a shorter version. Um, but um, I think that does appeal to the modern day audience that doesn't mean it's not right and it's it's just like a lot of the modern day views aren't necessarily right or good they're popular that's it so my my argument is always what's right what's good for the song what's good for the listener and if somebody's got the patience to listen to it and get into that song they're gonna love it whatever i'm gonna think about it this way for uh, for folks out there that are your age my age right we're kind of like used to it um, so we have a bit more tolerance, right? Whereas the younger generation, I'm not saying anything bad about the younger generation, obviously, but I don't think that there's enough patience there to listen to a superbly long song because, you know, um, it's all the, all the shortened down songs that are, that are really, you know, becoming popular. However, if you're going to be at a concert, right? 
then you know five six seven eight nine ten minutes it, it, it's really not going to make that big of a difference because you're going to be sitting there vibe into this song no matter what because you know you're going to be there live you're going to be seeing something completely different so um i'm just for all intents and purposes of the show and thinking about radio quality uh what they would put on the radio uh, something that could be promoted very easily um so 436 i believe would be you know a, a good kind of like concert length but maybe because you could cut out a little bit of the instrumental portion there, right? Just, oh yeah, just, oh, just could, about four I, bars, right? Yeah, I, I think it's 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 um, there's not enough chain. You know, it's it's a drifty sort of song, and it's not enough uh, going on with the chord changes to make it notice. If you cut out a forty second segment or a minute segment there, I think you could probably get away with it because it's that kind of song that could you could probably edit it and and you could do a single version definitely if you picked the right spot to cut that's for sure absolutely single version album version carla said it best right there uh but overall ian good job uh props to you and um keep doing what you're doing and uh carl has followed you so uh if there's any developments with ian we will let everybody know obviously yeah. watching the show you don't know where to find these artists well you can find them very easily in the video description below Please hop on there, show all these artists some love. Uh, we, we're, we're, we'd be very much appreciated. I'm sure that the artists would very much appreciate it as well. Right now, the second serving of the Purple Bowl of Destiny. Which is coming from this direction today. There we are. So, we actually have the Purple Bowl back as well. So the Purple Bowl is back. Yes. It is back. Bowl is back. Right. Okay. So, you say, um, you say again? and stop right all right okay it's one of those gonna come out there we are okay who what have we got here okay oh, okay so this is the category so about three inches away should focus original music original music okay hmm, that's curious that's interesting so it is curious let's how see. original would it be hmm Oh my goodness, where is this group? Right, I'll have a look at this direction as well. It might not be that there's lots of these, so I'll just have a little look myself. Yeah, because I, if I find it quickly, then I can tell you the... Um, I wonder if I could put it in the search bar. Ah, it's right, I've got it. So if I tell you the latest one, uh, it's coming up now, and then I'll give you the artist name and song, and then you can search it. Um right so the the latest new one is j dot decker j decker uh end of time the song's called is that j dot like d e k k a decker uh d e c k e r d e c k e r okay j decker okay and the song is end of time which is one of the silver ones there silvery gray ones mm -hmm. let's see we got vigilante since it's gonna resolve all we can't look at you know end of time yeah that's the latest one that's been released uh posted seven days ago 130 fire six saves 154 plays um and um which is pretty good going actually so um this is from nashville tennessee 17 tracks 658 plays 39 followers Garrett J. Decker is an American songwriter specializing in a wide variety of music and has released the Black Triangle Collection in May 2022, an experimental album featuring many musical genres. That sounds intriguing. It does sound intriguing. Just looking at the stats here, um, link will obviously for Slabs be in the description below, but you can also, you'll also be able to, uh, if you click that link, get them on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Music from what it looks like so far. Uh, saying singer, songwriters, original music. Uh, first comment here is dope. Or dope. <laughs> yeah, I think it's dope. Yeah. Which, Which would be an insult in any other language. No, it's all good. But, uh, 154 <laughs> plays on this one, six saves, 130 fires. This one is four minutes, 33 seconds long. This is Jay Decker, End of Time.
I got to think like right off the top of my head, I think, uh, I think Sir Decker here, uh, Garrett J. Decker, uh, I got to think he's been in the music game for a while. You think? I think so. The, um, the song itself, um, had like really good progression to it. You know, um, it was, it was, it was very nicely done. It's very nicely laid out the progression of it, the buildup and everything, um, the, the, the lyrics, the harmonies, the, uh, the guitar, everything was very well done. So I'm thinking that there was, um, I'm thinking that there was a lot of time spent on, um, on this. Um, let's see. Black triangle collection was released in May, 2022, but that's that one. I would love to know. I would love to know. And I'll have to touch base with, uh, with, uh, Garrett here to see how long he's been in the music game. But, uh, 
but I do think that overall this was it was a it was a good song. It was very very well done. Once again, the progression top notch. Um, end of time. Once again, the name of that song. Um, if you if you just go through some of the comments, very tasteful track, ambient synth in the background. You know, um, yeah, it was it, it was kind of mesmerizing, kind of like going back to what you were saying about the song before, is like kind of like releasing your day's stresses as you're driving home from work. You you kind of like put this on, kind of like had this, uh, you know, kind of like a. Uh, like maybe like a like, like a beetleish feel to it uh, a little bit you know what i mean um but also i think i think this has been one of the better shows for um original sounding music right like we really haven't been giving many comparisons to sounds like this sounds like this sounds like this there's been a lot of very original sounding music and this is one of those ones uh for me which it, it definitely it definitely has that original sound to it so um props for sure uh, thumbs up because yeah, end of time right here by uh, by Garrett Decker, Jay Decker, I should say right here as the artist name. Um, well done. What more can I say? Well done. Yeah, I'm sorry I cut off there. I, I um from what I heard of it, um, it was oddly enough, it was a bit sort of um backgroundy, tinny, and not that might not be the actual song and production, but it sounded a bit quieter in in my cans than the previous songs. So I don't know if that was a just just the fact of the song was like that or if it was something going on with my you know uh the no, quality of the, the, the um the the volume of it was 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 a tad low it was a tad low okay yeah. so it wasn't my imagination so basically so yeah that sort of the getting the actual uh, and again this is something that that you'll probably be able to expand on more but uh yeah getting those levels right by putting on a multipressor on the overall mix um on, on your stereo out mix and also um you know, getting those levels right as well um so that you can sort of yeah, you basically have the volume a sort of this is the thing that gets me it would be nice if there was some sort of industry standard thing that you could apply because you could still got to do it by ear and you think right okay is this louder than the stuff i've done before quieter which is why i guess you get the mastering you know someone in to do the mastering who knows right, what they're yeah. doing which is fine but if you if it's all down to you and you're still learning then there's certain things you know you, you just sort of got to play everything by ear to a degree well you so know you, you know the whole thing is is i've had i've had a bit of beef uh with some of your music with this right because you tend to leave your vocals low and sometimes the music comes off low as well because i think that you're afraid to give it like that little bit more um for or like work the automation in there or whatnot um you know but mm once again it's kind of like um some people like the boom 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 kind of like heavy hitting stuff some people do like the uh quiet calm and mellow um obviously if you put on a track that was recorded in the in the 60s as opposed to a track that was recorded today it's going to sound completely different as far as volume is control is considered because you know back then everybody was working with analog stuff right whereas digital is a lot more forgiving you can actually clip without it actually clipping you know whereas if you were recording on analog and you clipped well you really clipped you know it, yeah. I mean, it was pretty much the end of the song right there hmm. but i think the song from what i heard yeah structurally sounded nice and solid um yes yeah, radio friendly i guess and and it's it's definitely harking back to the 60s um the sounds of groups like the association i think that that kind of thing so that sort of late 60s you know, sort of psychedelic um sort of period they're very much rooted in that sort of 67 to 69 era that that song i would say yeah so yeah. Good, good good yeah nice enjoyable song all around uh is is what we're getting at here um so uh great job looking forward to hearing more right there once again uh, all the links to all the artists in the video description below please click on those links send everybody some love somehow and uh now to the song that caught my eye when i first saw your uh your track list here today um boy so it's a uh, people yeah. people need pickles huh mm, i can't remember which um category i found this in whether it was comedy or whether it was sort of alternative or something oh no there we are comedy and singer songwriter are the two categories so i think i found this in comedy um which is which is good um but yeah we're the people need pickles we're a married couple from colorado trying to get our music heard and our art seen so it's their art designs as well we hope you enjoy the weirdness well 
with an introduction like that, who who would uh, be intrigued? I love the annotation here, which is uh, the name of the song is Bad Hangover, uh, a song about the aftermath of having a few too many adult beverages. <laughs> I can't, I can't wait to hear it just because this is the first thing that popped out on your list. Um, and I, I've been kind of waiting for this. So let's check this out. Everybody, the people need pickles. goodness dark mm. dark humor to say the least oh so, <laughs> uh, well carl take it away i need i need to, I need yeah, to yeah i think it's uh, from the outset with, with the guitar da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, all that kind of thing going on it's uh and the rhythm it's just a very good sort of catchy drinking song yeah, with with that sort of hungover feel to the vocals, very Nick Cave, very Nick Cave in some respects in, in the vocal delivery, and that kind of, I suppose Zapparesque in a way in some respects, and in in you know just this it's a bit off the wall. Um, the finger snaps, finger clicks, very catchy. But so yeah, it's just got a real sort of good good vibe to it this one and uh especially when yeah it really makes you feel like you want to sing along when it goes pop goes the barrels pop goes the barrel and down goes carol and so those little lines just stay straight in your head uh and um so yeah really catchy dark off the wall crazy and i love it really good really good mm. I don't know what to say here. <laughs> um, hmm. <clears throat> Nick Cave ish. I can see Nick Cave. Yeah. With the red, right hand, you know. Um, <laughs> I've done some cool artwork actually, looking at their artwork as well. Yeah, it's, no, it's, um, well it's some really good uh, stuff. Uploaded about six dollars. Mm, and I think it's their artwork. <laughs> kind of like looks at like bad hangover that's that's pretty decent 
That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like the fiery pickle. The people need pickles. I love pickles, uh, gherkins and things. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a clever name. It's a clever name, right? Um, they're definitely, they, they got their own groove. Once again, uh, this has definitely been the uh, the episode for original music. Mm. Um, they definitely have it. Uh, but once again, uh, one of the comments there is uh, great witty lyrics, very dark humor. Um, very much so. Um, you know, uh, like they said, they're trying to bring weirdness. Um, <laughs> we hope you enjoy the weirdness, at least is what they say right there. Um, well, they're bringing it. They're bringing the weirdness for sure. I really, yeah, I can't. I, I can't have a comment of like who this sounds like where it could actually be played other than kind of like, let's say, um, you know, if you're having a bonfire, uh, just kind of like hanging out with a group of friends and everything like that, you know, you're cracking open the beers, roasting some sausages, doing some s'mores, you know, uh, something of that sort. Um, I, I think, I think just because of the lyrics themselves, it, it really wouldn't have any place. Uh, like, let's say like, uh, on the radio, um, <laughs> maybe, may be licensable to a film um but yeah. i really don't think that uh, just because the turbulent nature that we have in the um in the u.s especially with uh with some of the uh, some some things that the lyrics had mentioned um i just don't think that would fly here you know what i mean yeah. um so which is why i'm kind of like at, at, at like kind of like grasping for words and trying to come up with it with a good review that will work here in the uh you know in the us and the uk uh this is where we're promoted mostly so um once again dark humor you have to appreciate it for what it is yeah yeah absolutely yeah and just just you know people are too serious these days you just get a sense of humor you know just just yeah. know, life's too yeah. short you've got to enjoy life and make the most of it have fun have a laugh even if it's at your own expense have a laugh you know and uh, yeah people yeah, just just to take life too seriously. And music should be fun. Yeah, you know, it's okay. You can have your dark music, serious music, beautiful music, and plaintive and reflective, melancholic, celebratory, whatever you want. But this this has a place, and and music should entertain, and it should appeal, and it should be, I think, first and foremost, you know, fun and make you react in a certain way. So, um, but um, I think yeah, you know, this couple, you can imagine, you know, going for a dinner with them or something, they'd be quite fun. Working in the studio with them, I bet that's fun. So you know, some be great, great to collaborate with someone like that. So, uh, but then you know, sometimes these, yeah, so tight knit some acts and artists together, particularly yes. husband and wife couples, very hard to sort of work with people who have got a certain way and a certain dynamic of working. They seem very open minded from the from from, from the song mm -hmm. that I've heard so far. So I don't think that they would really have a problem with somebody kind of like jumping in and kind of like uh you know, giving their two cents on, you know, let's go this direction or let's go that direction. Maybe we'll add a couple of more uh lyrics here or uh whatever the case may be. In either case, um this would be a song that I could see uh, kind of like developing like kind of like a cult following, you know, how you have films that develop, you know, cult followings, right? Because yeah. it's not, it's not everybody's kind of like cup of tea, but, um, but it's definitely there for a reason. And like you said, music's meant to be enjoyed um, mm. no matter which way you look at it. The same thing with films. Nobody really um, releases a film to offend you. It's meant to, uh, you know, for certain people to enjoy certain things. So um, music works the same way. And uh, so, um good on you the people need pickles for crying out mm. and it seems like um it seems like we'll probably hear a bit more from them i think so i'm following them i'm, I'm interested and looking at some of the titles and things you know um it just looks quite quirky and the artwork's good so i, th I think um i haven't actually listened to the other stuff yet but i have followed them so i will get around to it at some point and uh but i would recommend people just check them out all of these artists check them out see what you think of their other songs if you think it sounds quite interesting check out the rest of their music on spotify or wherever whatever platform you use um yeah, because they would have done other songs that you like check them out add them to your playlist get them get their songs played and you know that, that helps everybody out absolutely if we get if we get a couple of artists into rotation from uh, from each show onto you know uh, various people's playlists then obviously we can help that algorithm maybe going to uh, to get them even more and more plays let's definitely help them out for doing what they're doing uh same way that you would support a comedy act a film wh whichever way you want to look at it please um visit the video description below obviously i know i'm mentioning it a lot but 
that's where all the links to all these great artists are. The people need pickles. Everybody needs pickles, I think. I like oh, yeah. pickles. I like fried pickles too, by the way. So, fried so pickles, huh? I want like a what fried onions. Kind of, yeah. So uh, there's breading, and they deep fry them, and uh, so you have your fried pickles, just like you would have, you know, onion rings, or yeah, it's actually a brilliant idea. So somebody I actually was, sat there and thought about that. So I was, was just saying, <laughs> Susie, because they do things like um, yeah, battered sausage, battered cod over here in fish and chip shops, and in some shops up north and in Scotland, yeah, they'll do uh, yeah battered uh, deep fried Mars bar. So that's uh, obviously a heart attack in a single meal, but ultimately you know um i was saying to her the other day wouldn't it be nice if they did like say the gherkins um pickles in a sort of batter or fried fried sort of thing and because they don't over here and uh, lo and behold they do over there if you have not had them if you like get a recipe check them out grab some breadcrumbs you know and um and and just cut it into slices because they're, they're cut into um you call them crisps they're not chips because chips in england are fries here uh but crisps in england are chips here so yes. they're cut into slices like uh like potato chips right and so they're breaded than deep fried so you know look up a recipe try it out they're actually very good i didn't think that i would like it because i'm like warm pickles who the hell wants to eat warm pickles right yeah <laughs> but but it actually works it actually works well, it so, works for onion rings so i'm guessing it must work for pickles it's got to you know hey, some mm. stuff some stuff is Thanks. just good like that so uh bringing us to our show stopper right over here yeah, it's an unusual showstopper because I, I, it's um, yeah, we're, we're into country and singer songwriters, but I, I found this really uplifting, really nice song, and um, this 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 chap, Leon Jacobs is the the artist, but the actual artist name is Lion J, and he's from Veringing, uh, Veringing in South Africa. Only six followers so far, but he's only, I think, you know, added six tracks only recently. I'm a performing artist who loves to sing my own and other artists' music. I also entertain and do live shows and enjoy the interaction with the audience. I've always had a passion for music, and in this late time in my life, I give most of my energy to my music and music career. So I thought, well, you know, this, this again, uplifting song, and um, I thought it's just, just nice to... Uh, support these kind of artists you think well he's in south africa we haven't had a south african artist yet so let's see what you think of this one let us check it out lion j with my country song i don't play any instruments but I can use my voice In my head there are melodies Which I don't always have a choice Depending on the mood I'm in The tunes come into my head Then I just start to sing Until the notes go dead So I sing my country song Maybe you can sing along It doesn't matter what as long as you don't stop to sing Let the music fill your heart You will never fall apart Will comfort you in every mood Always help you to feel good So I sing my country song Maybe you can sing along It doesn't matter what mood you're in As long as you don't stop to sing Let the music fill your heart Will comfort you in every mood Always help you to feel good Music is just a part of me I feel it in my veins Sometimes fueled by happiness And sometimes fueled by pains When I feel glad inside It bumps down to my feet But when the mood Change to sad, my heart turns down the beat. So I sing my country song, maybe you can sing along. It doesn't matter what mood you're in, as long as you don't stop to sing. Let the music fill your heart, you will never fall apart. Oh, 
comfort you in every mood Always help you to feel good So I sing my country song Maybe you can sing along It doesn't matter what mood you're in As long as you don't stop to sing Let the music fill your heart You will never fall apart Will comfort you in every mood Always help you to feel good Will comfort you in every mood Always help you to feel good There you go, Carl. I like your, uh, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Very uplifting track. Um, you know, it, it's it's a shame sometimes here, right? Because like he's saying, like he's waiting until the um, the later portion in his life to actually, uh, to, to, to kind of like get into music, uh, which is, you know, if you feel something, this is going to be my words of inspiration here. If you feel something, if you feel like you want to get into music, if that's what you feel like you want to do, if you want to paint, if you want to, you know, make films. I mean, if you if you think that there's something out there that's that's more than what you do out there for you, then by all means, uh, do it. Um, please visit uh, Leon Jacobs over here, otherwise known as Lion J. Uh, he's got a couple of social media accounts here. You can find him on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook is what it looks like so far, and um, show him some love. Tell him that you uh, you like his music and to keep on going. Um, maybe 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 he'll pick up an instrument and learn an instrument someday soon. You know, you never know. It's never too late for new things, Carl. Never. No, that's right. It always follow your passions when you've got time, and obviously life gets in the way of things. Always, I've been trying to do this next last uh, the latest album, fifth fifth album, and haven't been able to make a good start on it because life's been too busy. It's getting in the way, but uh, you know, you just got to do what you can when you can. Um, and there's so many artists out there that are you know just struggling for time, struggling against budget and money and funds and you know, the time it takes to promote your music on social media, there's so many obstacles, but you just got to do what you feel is right. And that song was very heartfelt. It was a nice message. It was uplifting. It was positive. And it's all about music and the quality of music and, and the, and the positive, it's such a positive message that people can relate to that. There's a nice bit, bit in it that you could imagine him singing live where it's just him and the beat. And you can imagine people clapping. I can imagine people line dancing to this. So it's a very good song for line dancing, I would expect. Um, and it's that sort of fusion, actually, of modern country rock, which I'm not so much a keen fan of the where it's sort of about 80s onwards, mid 80s onwards, it became sort of very standard country rock sound. But I think what's what this has got is a bit of the old 70s um, country in there. Maybe sixties as well to a degree, because there's a little sort of sort of Charlie Rich meets Hank Williams type sound in his voice. More of a Freddie Fender. I would think more Freddie Fender in his voice. And there's a there's a natural um vibrato in his voice, a bit like not dissimilar, oddly enough, to Brian Ferry, where you've got that sort of sort of almost nervous sort of feel. I don't know if it's his natural voice, because I've not listened to all these other songs yet, but I or whether it's just a sort of nervous thing but i feel like that's probably his natural vibrato coming through and that actually suits the music in the same way that you know as i say freddie fender or something like that or they, they've got that that sound to their voice which which really works um i liked it because it's such a positive message and i that's what music's all about it's this guy doing his thing in south africa putting his music to the out to the world yeah. and it's country music from a country he may never have been to but he loves the music and it's just, just, you know, how universal is that? It's wonderful. No, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm just kind of like going back when you were talking about going, go, going like, you know, deeper in time, I was thinking like maybe a little bit of Conway Twitty or something like that, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, it's good. He, he does. You're absolutely right. He does have a natural voice for this type of music uh, from what it seems. And, uh, and once again, just a damn shame that somebody is realizing a little bit too late in their life to, to follow their passions. So please all you musicians out there that are kicking out all this awesome music and you are doing what you're doing. Um, don't, don't be scared to throw it out there. Don't be scared to throw it out there because like, listen, are you going to get, are you going to get some negative feedback? Probably. Are you going to get some good feedback? Probably as well. 
you know, so it's all a balance. But if you if you're doing what you love to do, and uh, and that would be the most important part, then by all means, put it out there to share with the world, because uh, you know we need a little bit more positivity going on these days. Uh, as Carl mentioned, we're all kind of like short for time, so um, I've been trying it myself to start a new album, and I've been trying to start a co collaboration with Carl here, um, and I just don't, I can't find the time to do it. It's just absolutely nuts um maybe sometime along the lines of 2024 2025 things <laughs> will change where people will have will have a little bit more time um but for right now we kind of like got to keep keep kicking and working and everything like that we do all have day jobs so we understand how all you guys feel um it does seem difficult at times just once again just don't give up don't give up don't give up don't give up especially if it's something that you love remember to keep that positive frame of mind to everything. And um, Carl, any uh, any closing thoughts for you here, sir? No, I think um, what you said there was is important. If you put your music out there, it will connect with someone, and it might not set the world alight. It might not make you, you know, a whole hat full of money, but if it connects with one person in the world somewhere you've connected with another human being on a deep level and that's done its job in some sense that music obviously we all want to make some money out of it we all, well not all of us but um but we yeah we all aspire to be successful if we put our music out there but i think just do it anyway if you've if you've got reservations about putting music out there and you've got a stack full of songs that you've written but never recorded or just recorded but never released just do it because you know what have you got to lose really yeah we've got a short time on earth enjoy yourself as much as you can make the most of life put your music out there you'll always have family to support you friends to support you and there'll be people that you don't know yet that are going to become friends like T tom has with me like Ephraim has with me for rookie rogers and like russ paladino has so so you will connect with people if you put music out there and there'll be like-minded people who enjoy your music and you enjoy theirs absolutely 100 percent. and i gotta give a couple of shout outs to just people that i have met through doing uh through doing this so far which would be uh jamie salazar from within me nathan Bashir from monsters are real obviously uh keith from uh, who is slow walk um carlos carlos fandango ephraim rogers who is rookie rogers ephraim hadley who is rookie rogers i should say russ paladino um amongst many many others i mean i know i'm leaving some people out here uh, stay tuned for the ones and twos uh, you know especially because um coming up september 3rd i believe is when i'm going to have a sit down interview with de Laurentiis finally um well, we've been working to, working that out with her promoter and uh so that should be very interesting have a ton of questions for her um because uh if you guys don't know de Laurentiis, i'm sure you've heard her mentioned on the show before uh she was not only on the voice not only on ted talk she is not only touring the country she did the bastille day festival in uh in new york she is really blowing up and, uh, and it's fantastic because she's finally gaining that traction, that momentum that all the uh, indie artists aspire to. So as Carl said, keep your negativity to a minimum because the positive frame of mind is what's going to get you to where you want to go. Uh, she's obviously doing everything there. Uh, Carl, we will, uh, obviously, we're, we're going to start promoting um, the Christmas album very shortly because, hey, we have just over four months until Christmas, if you can believe it. Oh, that. I know. I was, well, this this is the thing this is what i'm saying time time is a big enemy and um in springtime i'd said to myself right early summer late spring i will contact a load of radio stations email them with tracks i'll start putting together videos you know like even if it was just lyric videos some basic videos for all the tracks to help promote them and i just don't know the time for any of it so because it's all down to me so as with all of you know, many of these artists on slaps it's all down to the person themselves and you know if 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 money isn't a, an obstacle then time is certainly an obstacle and potentially resources are an obstacle so uh, and all three usually so um but yes that would be a great help because um and i hope people enjoy it because a lot of effort was put into that album it i had actually originally recorded a completely separate album with another um associate musical associate of mine which one day may get out there but i decided that as that one wasn't happening for various reasons i would just write a brand new christmas album and uh you know just just put the album together rookie rogers 
helped master it and it was fantastic and um did some collaborations with people on it and hopefully people enjoy the variety and the fact that it's christmas some people just love christmas so they'll just hopefully lap it up hopefully we don't take our negativity into the later part of the year obviously we know that thanksgiving coming around um do you celebrate something similar to thanksgiving in england i know i think we talked about this before but like yeah, kind of, don't really. like, kind of like mid November ish. You don't have anything going on. Like, Nothing mid November, no, because we like, uh, we is have. This like here starts shopping season for you or anything? Well, <laughs> yeah. uh, October, sorry, 5th of November, we have bonfire night and, you know, well, what some people call fireworks night, but it was, it was basically celebrating um, the fact that. Uh, the gunpowder plot was foiled and King James II was was saved uh, from, you know, and Parliament wasn't blown up. So that was, you know, a few years later, after the event, they started celebrating by having fireworks and effigies of the guy being burnt. <laughs> and uh, so... Um, uh, so that was that was the, mo the only real celebration thing in November really, that we have. And then it's just Christmas. So everything from summer onwards, you know, celebrating summer and having a good time. It, it's just all, as soon as the schools go back from September, it starts ramping up towards Christmas. Right. So you're basically talking about like anything before Christmas is basically Friday the 13th. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. It's Halloween. It's become a big thing now. Burning effigies and uh, <laughs> and bonfires. Yeah, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait to stay on the positive side there, you know? So, yeah, um, so it's all very wicker, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in the Edenbridge bonfire in Kent, in, in the southeast um, of England, we used to, I mean, there's some big bonfire events and, um, they used to have the guy who is whoever was the the baddie that year. So let's just say, uh, for argument's sake, during the Falklands conflict in 1982, it would have been uh, General Galtieri or whatever, something like that. Um, and yeah, you know, so each each year there would be a a big villain that they'd have up, and then would burn them. So yeah, all very nice, all, all very. Uh... <laughs> is it going to be? Is it going to be Boris Johnson this year? Ah, oh, I don't know who's the big villain. I mean, are we talking? The thing is, uh, I, there's quite a few villains. No, it's got to be Putin, isn't it? I, I mean, it's got to be uh, the the the, <laughs> the middle class left wing types, especially if they're putting their bonfire together. It'll be Putin. That's that's what my money's on. It could be Johnson, could be Putin, could still be Trump, but he's not really. He's kind of old news, isn't he? In some respects, uh, could be Biden um an effigy of biden would be interesting but i don't think he, they can't burn an old man can they i mean this is the problem this is he gets a bit of a sympathy vote because he's old and doddery so you know ineptitude it you know the the old and dodderiness covers a multitude of sins really so he gets away with it um but um but there's so many villains i mean there's the well two years ago i guess it would have been if they had gatherings for bonfires then it would have been the ccp <laughs> <laughs> i don't know there's so many villains now oh I mean, yeah no no there's there's yeah let's not get into that because there's way too much going on with that oh, way, yeah. way, way too much going on in the world mm. uh once again just spreading positive vibes as um you know as uh valentin has his song right positive vibes only um that's all we're trying to do here positive vibes only with, oh yeah with, with the show with everything uh we're very much looking forward to uh over here i'm going to say myself personally thanksgiving christmas um because that is genuinely time to be happy sit down with family and kind of like you know whoo finally take a breather and, and get those couple of days off to uh you know to spend with time and family as with uh carl and uh and Suze and louis and uh and, and uh, everybody over there um so our camp over in england as well as the united states wishing everybody the best and um obviously we'll touch uh, we'll touch more on the christmas albums that will be coming up the christmas songs that will be coming up we're going to do a um a christmas theme i'm sure um, yes, because, with all yeah. the um with all the uh um indie artists that are, that are releasing music or have released music in the past as far as that is concerned um let's let's really let's let's ask people let's just really not try to drown ourselves in negativity and look at the positive times ahead of us and uh just let's be thankful obviously for the fact that we do have creativity health family support and everything like that those mm. are the valuable things you know um money and everything else should come second to that so um 
wishing everybody a uh, great weekend and um, you know a fantastic time moving forward. I am DJ X Tech. With me, as always, is Carlos Fandango. We are trying to put the us back into music. So do please like, subscribe, and share, and let's get your music out there. We will catch you next time. First time coming up will be on the DJX X ones and twos. That will be next week, and then the underground sound the week following. Once again, wishing everybody a great evening. Um, hopefully, I can get this edited by evening, and uh, if not, uh, a great weekend or a happy Monday, depending on when this actually comes out. For now, once again, ta ta, to the loop. Ta ta, cheerio. <laughs>